we're going to talk about testing with diagnostic trouble codes. Diagnostic trouble codes help identify abnormal operation in computer control systems. Now we have in-depth training programs about things like misfire and fuel control. So we're not going to try in this program to talk about diagnosing more complex systems. But what we're going to talk about is once we've identified a subsystem we want to check, we want to look at how we would do it in a detailed manner. So let's attempt to take a common diagnostic trouble code and use the information like we've been discussing and the use of diagrams to test out a specific thing. Now the vehicle we're working with is a four-cylinder engine with a malfunction indicator lamp on and we're going to use a scan tool to pull a trouble code and it's P0171. P0171 says the system is too lean for bank one. Since it's a four cylinders, we only have one bank, so we've got pretty straightforward. Lean is a condition of insufficient fuel or excess air. Let me put that another way. Lean can be caused by a vacuum leak. Excess air, where air is entering and being metered and compensated for, or we can have insufficient fuel delivery because of bad injector, bad fuel pump, low fuel volume, whatever. We're going to talk about diagnosing systems that can cause this. In this example we're working with, it is not a vacuum leak. It's either fuel delivery or fuel control, and we're going to focus on the fuel delivery side. We can test the injectors and the fuel pump circuits using the same type of diagnostics we've been using and going deeper into test methods. We're going to be using both of these as we go along. This example is going to show you how to use additional tests for improved diagnostics that go beyond what many people are doing. First and foremost, we always stress it, let's get a schematic. It doesn't matter where you start, you're still going to need a schematic. We're going to test the fuel injectors because we've picked that area, and then we're going to test the fuel pumps and their associated circuits. But for right now, we're going to focus on checking fuel injectors several different ways. Use your shop information system to get a specific diagram so we know what we're looking at. We have highlighted in red here the four fuel injectors on our system. Now the problem with this diagram is we don't know where the grounds and power are in reality. We can make some assumptions. But let's go see how we would find out what's going on. We can find out that B plus comes from terminal D on diagram 23-6. Let's go to 23-6 momentarily. Here's 23-6. There's point D. It's coming off the fuel pump relay. It's coming off B+. plus. It's hot at all times. So we know for sure that is the B plus side. The other side, therefore, must be ground. What we understand now, after we've looked at all this, is that the PCM is going to supply ground to turn on the fuel injectors. If we have a problem with diagrams, and this is a good example, we've got them spread all over the place. Take a pencil and make your own rough sketch. If we take all those pages, we started off at fuse 4, which is a 20-amp fuse. It went from there to the fuel pump relay. From the fuel pump relay, it went to splice 152. Then it went to the injector. Then it was a connector for the injectors. Then it went to PCM ground. If it helps you understand better, rather than try to use four or five pages, draw this out so you have a good reference. Remember, this took us two separate pages to cover all this information. The other thing we can talk about, voltage versus current. Remember we are talking early on, anytime there's current flow in a wire, it generates a magnetic field. The amps probe you see on the right there is an quote, end quote, inductive amps probe, low amps probe, Hall effect amps probe, whatever you want to call it. It senses this weak magnetic field and reads it out as a voltage we can display on a voltmeter. We can use that, and we'll show you how to use that. Now, Doc and I both tend to use the ammeter. We'll talk about why. But let's go look at both methods. Here we have the ammeter. It hooks around there. The voltmeter's at the top. We don't punch holes. We tend to use very fine instruments that slide in sharp pointed probes beside the weather pack so we can go in and make terminal uh, contact inside the terminal. We don't want to make holes in the wires. Too many problems from that. We're going to use a lab scope. We're going to show you that it's no more difficult to set this lab scope up than it is to set up the voltmeter. We get this from Craig Technology. It's a Pico scope. 
And what we like about this, it is a true automotive scope. When we tell it we want to check fuel injectors, it automatically sets our screen up for us and tells us about any adapters we have to use to get a good pattern. Let's have a look at what this pattern tells us. First of all, we're going to have a spike. This spike occurs when we turn fuel injector current flow off. It's very much like the spike we get out of an ignition coil, only it's not as high a voltage. In this particular case, it's 54 volts. Now, how do I know it's 54 volts? Well, if I look over here at the blue scale on the right, I can see that that graticule is on the 54 volt line. It can be anywhere from 50 to 125. They should all be even. There's an internal diode inside the computer that keeps this from going too high. And it will limit it to whatever it's set up for. But all injectors on a vehicle should be the same. We're going to talk more about how to diagnose this in a moment. Let's look at some of the other pieces. The sweep right across the screen. If I set this up to one millisecond per division, I'm going to get a nice pattern like this. I'm looking at a four millisecond pattern here where the, the voltage goes down and current flow starts till it turns off four milliseconds later. Well, when the injector's off, I read battery voltage. And I'm going to show you about using smart cursors later so you can understand this. Then when I turn the injectors on, supply ground, I get a very low voltage. Let's look at that ground in detail. Here's a good example. Notice I have put my cursor over that part of the ground and it reads the voltage. It says I'm reading 24 millivolts. It's a good ground. Remember, that ground, as we look at the overall big picture we were showing you earlier, it goes all the way back to the PCM, from the PCM all the way back to chassis ground, from chassis ground back to battery negative. So when you're looking at this, you're looking at a very big picture beyond just the injector and the PCM. Let's talk about this kick. This kick we're going to get because we're collapsing a magnetic field. And then the voltage is going to drop down. And something strange is going to happen out here a little ways. We get a little hump. This is the injector's pintle closing. Let me say that again. This is the fuel injector's pintle closing. As it moves back in and close up the injector, because it's de-energized, we get a little voltage hump here. We're looking for differences. We're looking for ones that don't close at the same point this does. Sticky injectors will close later. Weak springs will close much earlier. So what we can see here is different things happening. All of them should be approximately the same. Not exactly, but approximately the same. We had to go to high-tech tools like this lab scope with the voltage patterns to detect the reason for our failure. And we need to diagnose this low B plus to our injectors. Let's run through real quick again and review it. We suspected low B plus because of lean fuel mixture and the current showed low injector. To diagnose it, we want to divide this circuit in half, just like we did in those light bulbs. Remember, this is duplicating our problems that we did earlier. There was light bulbs in a circuit. Yeah, we have more than one here, but it's one branch has low voltage. Well, if we pick connector C134, pin 8, that's where B plus comes in. This is going to divide the system in half. We've got splices and stuff before and after it, like we saw in our drawing. So let's see what happens. Or if its voltage is low here, it's back in this red area. We have to go back to the previous page, see if it's leaving the fuel pump relay because it's before this connector. If B plus is normal, it's after this connector and it's before the splice because all the injectors are affected. Now the point we're trying to make is the theory we used before is being applied just like we had light bulbs. The difference is we got here for a different reason. We got here because we used a lab scope and we used other things to get us here so we could do this test. But look at how we divided it by going to one test. The connector is definitely easier to get to than a splice. And if we went all the way back to the fuel pump, there's too much in between. We don't divide anything. So this divided it in half for us. Sometimes to do this, you'll use scopes with multiple displays. Three, four, some scopes like this one has as many as eight different things at one time. Just sometimes you want to see more signals or several signals at the same time to compare them. Next, we're going to talk about the low amps probe because we're going to be using this low amps probe 
to answer the problem we just had and bring us back to diagnosing that circuit. We're going to use AMPS because it checks a number of things at one time. 